Hey, Kate. How are you? Good. How you doing? Doing great. How's your week been? My weekend went well. Good. <laughs> I'm ready for the next weekend. <laughs> you and me both. Funny how that works out, isn't it? Yeah, it's Tuesday, but I want to be done. Yeah. Fortunately, we get, uh, we're one of those companies that gets Veterans Day off just tomorrow. Oh, so, you do? That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think we... it's because our CEO grew up in a government or military family or something like that. So, anyway, it was a pleasant surprise to see that on the calendar. If I had a company, I would give people all the holidays off. <laughs> I'm coming to work for you. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Carol. Nice to meet you. Hey, how are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Oh, I'm good. We're going to be busy today. Yeah, thanks for pointing out. Like, I have to say, I'm a little, I don't know if, uh, Charles is also feeling seems a little bit confused because there are like so many subgroups and it's like yeah like I really want to you know I'm sure there's like an etiquette and how to do stuff and it's like and it's like okay I'm tr just trying to figure it out I didn't know so I was like when I saw this gr uh, contributor growth working group and then I was like okay this sounds like the right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah 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 we're, we're not terribly formal. Like if you communicate honestly on any of our channels, like you did on the mailing list or whatever, like it's a small group, people will find you. It's just, we have these working groups so that um, people who care about focusing on one topic for an hour every couple of weeks can do so and not feel like they're on three meetings a week or anything like that. So for example, I don't go to the governance meetings unless I'm really keen on something they're talking about. I've just been joining all of them. <laughs> How many are they? To do it. You'll get a lot of work assigned to you. <laughs> so, um, but, but this seems like the um, right group to do. So you, you heard my pitch. Oh, you read my pitch. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think uh, Charles found the SIG by coincidence. I don't know how, like, because we were just talking about like, well, we have these challenges and we really want to, you know, um, create a framework and make it more, you know, because I mean, Linkerd has been doing a lot of things, you know, but it's like yeah. not in a strategic way. And um, yeah, and then he 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 found this and was like, oh my god, this sounds like exactly what we need. And then yeah, this is exactly <laughs> what we need. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, it's like um, I think is any I think that it was on the agenda, so we don't have anything else. So we did. I just haven't oh. updated it yet. <laughs> okay. Um, because oh, I know Paris and Karen. It's if they show up. If they don't show up, we're not going to talk about their stuff um <laughs> but that's very dear to our hearts as well so it's yeah like, no we're definitely it's talking about that. yours first um so how yeah like yeah if you could just let us know as newbies uh you know what we would like to do is like how do we make it happen you said like yes it is oh. the right um group uh how do we get it started what is yeah just like a quick yeah. introduction into the SIG world for Charles and me. Sure, sure. Um, one, Paris is probably the better person to answer, but she's not on the call yet. She's gonna be a couple minutes late. Um, so far, what our group has been doing is we get together every other week. Oh, we can, obviously people can get together more if they want to, but that's just kind of our regular recurring cadence. And then put stuff on the agenda we could spend an entire meeting doing a working meeting where we talk just about for example contributor growth strategy framework and being like what do we want in it let's open up a document and start collaborating um and then usually one person uh takes point for getting something uh edited and completely filled out so that we could open up a pull request to our repository i don't know if you've seen this yet This is where, uh, when we're ready and we have a, like a, uh, the framework, this is where it would go. 
Um, I'm working right now on taking what's here and making a website so people can read it. Yeah, I saw like what you shared and it looks great in, um, in the Slack channel. Yeah. Well, if I could type. Where did I put it? Ah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So I'm working on guides right now. And essentially what would happen is we'd, we'd collaborate here. You can uh, you know work on it uh, independently. You can engage with people in the community and start filling this out. Um, and then when you're ready, you'd send a pull request to add essentially like a page for this, but they're just pages in here at the moment. So like if we go into contributor growth, um, at the moment we have just documents and we're keeping them here. We don't have them on the website yet, but, and then it's just markdown and whatever you wanna write. <laughs> and the only thing is we just need to make sure that um, as a group, as a SIG, we all kind of agree on what we're saying um, so usually that's not a problem, but, yeah. uh, that, that kind of stuff usually comes out in these meetings where people in contributor growth or whatever will say like, wow, I vehemently disagree or something. Um, and otherwise the PR is mostly just editing, making sure, you know, there's no typos. We didn't miss anything, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And how um, do we go about process? it? Yeah. Uh, how do we, cause, um, like personally, I don't have a lot to contribute in terms of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. I'm new to this. <laughs> so my idea was, okay, like if we have a few people who can just, you know, like provide feedback. And that's why I was saying, like, if we could, uh, you know, recruit a small group of people, uh, maybe like, you know, seven, I don't know, maybe less, it just depends, like, uh, and, and have a meeting we recorded like this one and then i just go and summarize it i want to make it as easy as possible for the people who have it in their brains because like that's my way of contributing right they they they, they give the knowledge and and then i could um um you know write a draft and then circulate it because I think like we are also working internally and trying to figure it out internally and, and Charles and I could probably also contribute a little bit, but the idea is like, um, I mean, there are so many people in different companies who have, uh, have been or in, from projects that are more mature, who know what has worked and what hasn't worked. And if we could like compile all that knowledge, you know, yeah. and have that, dynamic discussion you know because like we i mean we could come up with ideas and brainstorm but we haven't really tried it out <laughs> but like if we can like uh that was kind of my hope to get people to who have had the experience and yeah brainstorm and 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 capture that knowledge in a document that everyone can then benefit from and like how does that recruitment um part and do you think i mean is there an appetite at all do you think like do people because it is a big group but yeah the question is it's very easy to be on the mailing list right it's another thing to actually be part of <laughs> yeah, and yeah. i would suggest that um so one I, I have no problems with anything you're saying i'm just thinking about how we can make it happen um i would think first like identify people who we think we'd love to just ask questions too, because we're pretty sure they have good answers. And then I would make sure that we come together with like, come prepared with the questions we want to ask. And most people, if you say, can I just get some of your time? And maybe it's like 30 minutes and we ask some very targeted questions and then we handle collating it and editing it and bringing it together. I think people would be willing, uh, minus holidays, vacation, and the election <laughs> it's you know like yeah that's a standard like uh thing you have, kind of have to add everything at the moment um but i just want to bring that up because a lot of people are going to be involved with a conference i think it's next week Keep oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah and then yeah and then a lot of people have thanksgiving and then uh, PTO, but if we can kind of like work around that or maybe engage with people one-on-one -on -one instead of trying to get a big meeting of 10 people, uh, I think that would work pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and would you, because you've been uh, in a part of this group for uh, a little longer than us, <laughs> uh, which isn't difficult longer, <laughs> but um, could you help I, maybe like suggesting identifying people that you know that would be uh, like, you know, um, and I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but I, I just don't yeah. know who's part of that group and who you think are um, you know, are active and uh, know a lot that we could ask and we maybe like, we don't have to name names while we're recording. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. We're offline. I think we can come up with, one is projects we think who are doing this well. We may not know the, the people particularly, but we may go, we really think Envoy, for example, is doing a great job of growing their community. And we'd like to talk to someone who has been leading that and reach out to them. And we may not be like, oh, it's Matt Klein. Okay. Um, or we may just know certain people like Paris <laughs> who like, this is what they do. And if we can identify people who are community managers who focus on this stuff, uh, we can say, we know, we know they do a great job with it and we'll invite them. But I think it helps to talk about projects. Like are there individual projects that you think are doing this well and we'd like to reach out to them um i think we were trying we were discussing that last time right um um we were trying to identify projects that are but then we were talking about ourselves right now we're talking in general right uh, mm -hmm. Um, and one of the feedback was that a lot of people are struggling with the same thing so that oh, was yeah. kind of like the 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 aha moment for well i mean probably we should have guessed it right but like you always think you're the only one struggling with those things but apparently like everyone is going <laughs> through that uh, challenge uh, i think vitesse uh, josh mentioned them um here are you in this document could you maybe add some people uh, i didn't quite understand what you said vtex Vit yeah let me just where is where did you see that I think Vitesse used to be a Heptio project, right? Isn't it now like VMware or something? It's part of Tanzu. I, unless oh. I'm thinking the wrong one. It's Tanzu thing. I think I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I am wrong. I'm definitely wrong. No, no, that's fine. I just, um, I, I didn't pronounce it that way in my head. So I didn't. Oh. <laughs> How would you pronounce yeah. it? Maybe I, I don't know. No, I no, I just, uh, I never said it out loud before. <laughs> you know how that is. Um, yeah, I think part of the strategy that I'm also, or part of the strategy that we discussed is looking at other CNCF projects to see which are like roughly at the same level as us community wise and seeing what kind of collaboration we can do with them if it makes sense for two two projects to work together. <clears throat> um, but then also we want to take lessons from some of these projects that are already like Envoy, which has a huge community. Yeah, I think what would be very beneficial is talking to projects who are a lot more mature and have gone through all the pitfalls, you know, and said like, okay, this sounds like a good idea, but much more difficult. And just like, so we can, you know, create like, based on that, like all the knowledge that they um, accumulated over the years, then put that into like some guidelines. Um, so yeah, it's I a little bit different, different discussion from what we had last time we were talking about, like, who can we compare ourselves now it's probably more it's like who are like who's doing it right like when who is who is much further along and who can share. Yeah, their experience who yeah. Yeah, well that's why I put Paris on there because her work with Kubernetes. Um, qualifies for that mm -hmm. don't know many projects who have been pretty vocal about saying they're doing it well. <laughs> um, so I think a lot more people are gonna fall into the category of they're trying to work on this right now and that's what we wanna engage with. It yeah. may not be less the same level, is more just like whoever's like actively thinking yeah. about this. Yeah, it doesn't matter, you know, like if we get like different people who have tried different things uh, together, we can come up 
you know, with a much better plan, right? And and the idea is like you you put it out there, and then over the years, you know, we we add more, improve it, or like it's just like to get started, and then it yeah. should be a living document. At some point, you kind of start you know updating it with new experiences and new things that people have experimented, but instead of that know-how staying within those teams, you know, like it should be out there for the community. Yeah. I think that um, we should focus on being iterative with this. Uh, just getting, as soon as we get like one idea, one tip, one piece of advice, one reflection or case study, let's put it up there. Um, instead of trying to create something in a big bang, <laughs> so to speak, because I think we're going to get a trickle of feedback from people over time. I think it may be more of an engagement over a couple months talking to people and getting them when they're available to talk to us. Because um, like I said, for example, I don't expect many people to have time in the next month and a half, you know, yeah. to, to engage with us. But after the holidays, we'll be able to, to chat with people and then fill it out more and, and refine what we have um you're free to use this meeting this scheduled one to mm -hmm. invite people to uh if you if you don't want to try to set up one-on-one -on -one things with people you can invite them to come to this meeting when they're available um they may not work for all time zones though this is ridiculously late for yeah um, outside the u.s yeah so yeah so basically like kind of i think that the topics that um we had identified as like main and it's like and that can be like yeah as you said it doesn't have to be like the whole thing but like yeah. uh i mean you can only talk about so much <laughs> in each meeting mm -hmm. right would be like growing the code contributor base right like what are like strategies like and ideas yeah uh, that would be one meeting and then the second one and then this is just again this is just a suggestion because i wanted to put something out there and it's totally yeah, hear it. discussion and then recognizing and in, again recognizing and enabling non-code contributors. Definitely. Uh, that would be another one, right? And then the oh. other, the third one would be uh, recruiting external maintainers core, core uh, slash core contributors, uh, which would be with a particular focus on building the contributor ladder. So that's like we're very much aligned because I know that's. Uh, important thing as well for the graduation and that's something that we are very interested in it as well so it's great that that is a topic that other people put out there i have a question that, about that last one yeah. just real quick yeah i want to make sure i understand what the focus is is it trying to increase maintainer diversity specifically yeah, you like external external, it's not only, yeah so. or is it just trying to promote existing contributors into the maintainer role because like, those are actually two very different things well don't you call, don't you generally start as a contributor and then you become a maintainer you don't go right into maintainer yes however what i'm trying to say is that um your funnel of new contributors may not actually count towards your diversity at all um and if you're trying to find people who are potential maintainers from other companies mm -hmm. Um, that's a completely different ball game of trying to find someone who would basically have somebody who's being paid to work on your project, okay, find them, then it's them, topics. get them involved with the project. It's, it's a different, sometimes it happens naturally and they're already attracted to your project and you're like, I'm a Microsoft project. And then someone from VMware like works their way up just because they're purely interested. But when you're, when that hasn't happened and you're trying to graduate, <laughs> Um, I think different strategies are probably in order than just oh, maybe, generically yeah. encouraging people to move up the ladder because you may just not have any contributors from another company or who, who, or who isn't uh, basically an end user in the community who occasionally contributes and that doesn't I don't think that counts towards the maintainer diversity. Hmm. Um, well, I guess then let's split that up into two right because yeah yeah. Two topics. Yeah, and I think this is part of the iterative process that we've been going through is like, we know we want to 
have a contributor ladder. And I know that from one of the other, from the meeting last Thursday, that that's an agenda item for the, for the SIG as a whole, where we're trying to figure out is what is, how many rungs are there and what is the first rung? And yeah. What's the next rung? And so that's something I think we, we can all totally iterate on. Um, there we are a couple have, of, Oh, sorry. I was just going to let you know that we do have a contributor ladder that can oh, do. Okay. On. Yeah. I don't know if she'll be able to show up today. Um, the heck I'm doing. Where'd that go? One sec. It's a Slack DM. <laughs> okay. All oh, good. Goodness. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just think that you'd like to see it. So I want yeah, to no, for sure. And I was I was about to transition into a an orthogonal yeah. thought, so that's okay. Here we go. Just so you can see what we've been collaborating on so far in this working group. Um, if you're interested in just kind of seeing what we've got or any comments, we're actively looking for feedback on this right now. Okay, I don't think I've seen this one. This looks- It's brand new, you haven't seen it. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. bookmark it. Reviewer, okay. Yeah, I mean, this all makes, just reading this ladder here, it totally makes sense to me. Uh, right now we basically have like community member and contributor and reviewer are all one. Maintainer, is its own thing. Mm -hmm. Project lead and community maintainer, we, just, we haven't defined, um, like I think the roles are defined here. We haven't defined what that means within the context of our project. Um, and especially when it comes to something like project manager, um, we've, we've been taking all that on ourselves. And yeah, it's a much bigger conversation within the team to understand uh, if we are, if what it looks like for an external project or not external, but, you know, a, a project manager, release manager, but this ladder totally makes sense to me. Um, yeah. yeah. One thing, oh, sorry. I just want to call it one thing is that, um, we don't really expect unless you're in a very large project to have these be different people. We're okay. outlining roles, <clears throat> excuse me, roles and, for a small project, you're probably doing all of them if you're a maintainer, right? But we wanted to articulate what the roles were and, and allow people to kind of think about when they're thinking about their own project, like just naming it's a role, acknowledging the work, understanding uh, any responsibilities or anything you're accountable for, or understanding when the role isn't actually being satisfied appropriately. So you know maybe to look for someone to help meet that role and, and like fill it. So you're not alone, like no one has <laughs> individuals for all of these, but um, these are all things that usually a maintainer is overloaded and trying to do, so. Yeah, that's totally in line with what we're doing right now, okay. 100%. Um, yeah. So uh, the thought that I had a minute ago uh, was a conversation that we're, among the conversations we've been having internally, Catherine's been working, uh, really hard on you know, the what our um, growth strategy looks like, how we get folks into the community, how we recognize the work that they're doing. My approach has been more on the technical side. And one of the first things that I want to do, and I think the timing might be actually really great for this. I want to, as part of the framework, I would like to have um, a template for projects to have a, a hello world, right? And this is, uh, the idea is, here is a, uh, like a code insiders, or sorry, a, a VS code file or a, an IntelliJ file to get your project like set up, follow these steps to modify the code and print hello world. And then now you're ready to begin developing. Um, Can you help me understand, can we back up just one second? Yeah. Um, who, who do you expect to be using this template? <clears throat> like, who's the target audience for this? Is so this to it, get someone into your project or starting a new project? 
so the template would be the pro would be used by the project people right because uh, tool chains are complex and build pipelines are difficult and so um, what it would be is even if it's a really, really simple framework of um, you know if you use go you're going to need these libraries or if you use javascript you're going to need these libraries so it's really uh, the the on ramp or the onboarding process for somebody who's like I'm curious about this project it appears to solve a problem that I have and um, I, I need to know more about it. And so the goal would be like you clone the repository, you open the workspace file, you edit some code and you see those changes straight away. And again, that that's like the, the, the structure of it. Um, and so that would be the, the, the baseline for the template that each project uses. <clears throat> So for example, VTest, maybe they, they're getting, they want to onboard somebody quickly. I'm not sure what language they're using, but they can give you a template file that you, or sorry, not a template file. Uh, let, me, let me separate the two. So the template is for the framework. The, um, what's, what's a good name for it? Just like a, like a mini project. So you would do a mini project and that would be the fully filled out template that the project has. So Vitesse, uh, they take the template, they add in the implementation details of their tooling chain or their, their build pipeline. So for us, we're using Rust, which means you need Cargo um, and R the Rust SDK installed. You need Go installed. And so... Um, the template would be like, here are the things that you need to build this project. And then the implementation of it for us would be, you need Go, you need Rust. Um, we use Visual Studio Code. You can open this workspace file and start hacking straight away. Does that make sense, separating those two? Questions. Um, just because I'm trying to get everything that I think you have context on that I'm missing. Mm. Um, so for this project template, and you're saying like print hello world. Um, if you have an established code base, are they editing the code base or is this like a completely separate slimmed down set of code that just mimics the environment, but not the code? Nope. So uh, it's basically setting up your developer environment for a specific project. Right? Okay. So the template again would be used by Vitesse, it would be used by Envoy, it would be used by us and in that template, each project would fill in the details of what it would take for you to go and then enter like, uh, you wanna print hello world when the application starts up. So you're actually editing the project code and all you're doing is getting it to write a log line so that when that container starts up or when it, whenever the oh. application starts up, you can go and tail the logs and then like, you're just, okay, you say, okay, now you're yeah. ready. You're, you know that your build environment is working the same way that everybody else in the project has their environment working. And now when, uh, if you have a question or if you have, uh, if you file an issue or you file a pull request, you can go back and reference this and say, starting from the hello world project, I went and modified this code because I'm trying to do this. So that second piece that I just mentioned, I think is further down the line. The first part would just be like, let's create this template for step one for onboarding people to the project. And again, that template would be, um, these are the tools you need. These are the commands you need to run to build the project. Um, maybe here's some YAML to deploy the resources to Kubernetes. And those would be project specific, but the template would be something that they just go in and fill in quickly. So the template walks a project leader maintainer through thinking about all the things that would need to be given to someone who's a new contributor so that they could modify their code base and see it and run it. You nailed it. That's okay. in fact, the next time I try to explain, next time I explain it, I'm going to use those words. <laughs> okay. No, sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to ask so many questions. I just wanted no, to make no. sure I got what you were thinking about. I think no. this is cool. We have a section in the contributing guide right now Okay. where we encourage people to articulate everything we're talking about here, but we don't have anything that walks them through what new people would run into and need to know, yep. you know? 
And yeah. I think that would be very valuable. So it's kind of neat to think about. So that's, like I said, that's kind of more of the tech technology, yeah. like actual getting your hands into the code side. The other part is that Catherine has been working on and that we've been working on together, but mostly Catherine is, again, recognizing people, um, yeah, recognizing contributions, finding people who are already using Linkerd or, or using the project. I, that's funny that you wrote that. I was, that thought just came to my head. You get an onboarding badge. I like it. Yeah, like if I you really have like an onboarding project, we'll say, or experience, then you can get a little bit. And we've been talking about badges as part of our working group. How can we acknowledge that you have open governance, that you, that you meet these certain things so that someone looks at your project, they can quickly figure out like, Will someone help me onboard? Is this open governments or not? Or various things. Um, yeah. So this would be cool. I'm so sad Harrison in here because she loves badges. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so you got a bunch of cool stuff here. I just want to confirm that these are things that you would like to lead or are you asking us to take on and then lead? This, is, this, this template is something that I want to build specifically. Okay. Catherine, is that the same for you for the, the framework? Yeah, so I'm, as I said, like I just need the input. So yep. um, yeah, maybe having, doing one-on-one, -on -one, um, having, um, brainstorming a few ideas with, uh, like for questions with um, uh, Charles before meeting with people one-on-one -on -one, or like, yeah, I, like I'm, I'm willing to adapt to whatever works for the people that, have that information and want to share it uh but yeah i'm so i'll probably it sounds like it makes most sense to talk to paris first because she is one of those people if she's willing to yeah. have her maybe uh, interview her um ask her for advice and maybe the best uh, approach is like hopping from one to the other right like talking to paris and then have and like ask all the questions to her and then may i'm sure she knows people that know stuff and she could recommend this and then just hop from one person to the other because like since yeah. i don't know the community of the people maybe just like starting with one person and then hopping from one to the other makes yeah. sense no I, I think that makes sense you're probably want to get a, as many people up front because not everyone's going to be ready to talk to you for the next yeah. one so you can kind of move to whoever's ready um i would suggest for, for the questions that you want to ask for each topic, like I wouldn't just ask someone like, hey, let's grow a contributor race, right? Like just you were saying, work with Charles to come up with questions for each meeting. Like this would probably be a good thing to chat about in one of the SIG meetings too, mm -hmm. either this one or the general one to um, get some more ideas for, for yeah. questions to ask as well. Um, okay, so- Just so, so that we, we yeah. figure it out and we don't realize like three people in that we really want to be asking some other question too. You know what I mean? Okay, so, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and I'd rather do it right. And even if it takes a little longer than doing it, yeah. you know, um, just mediocre work and, and, you know, forgetting half of it. So action items for next meeting. So this is like every two weeks, right? So it's is it going to happen even though it's the uh, Thanksgiving week? Uh, yeah. Okay. So action item for next week is, um, well, there is no action because we're going to brainstorm one topic, right? So it's like uh, we're, we're going, the first topic was um, growing um, code contributor. And then, um, um, you yeah, know, like um, yeah. I'm going to come with some questions that I'm, I brainstormed with Charles and we're going to discuss them here and uh, see if we can add to them. And then um, maybe as a group come up with the best person to interview, maybe you can ask around, we can ask around, think about it, and, and then just have it ready, like the questions ready to talk to you, our first interviewee, which I'm happy to do. Does that Let me make that sure, sorry, I was typing as we were talking, so I'll make sure I got this. So you'd like to have some brainstorm questions ready to roll for our next meeting, and then maybe road test them on me in Paris? Yeah, so the, 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 the thing is like, I started 
adjusting, readjusting my ideas. So for next meeting, before our next meeting, Charles and I, I I'm going are going to brainstorm ideas for the topic for the first topic. Okay. And then we can discuss these questions in this meeting and get feedback and see what's missing. So we're not going to come empty handed. We're going to come with a few uh, questions. Okay. Ready to discuss and then we can see, you know, what what's missing, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, and then hopefully after that meeting we have a set of questions that we think will really capture um, everything we want to um, have in that part of the framework. Yeah. And then how, identify the first person to interview. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That seems good. Yeah. Um, Charles, was there anything that you wanted I don't I'm not pushing anyone for action item, by the way. <laughs> Things yeah. move at the pace people have time for. I was just gonna write down if you were planning on doing anything so people knew. Or if you want to focus before on the next the meeting. time. Yeah, before the next meeting, um in two weeks. Um I yeah, I think I'll try and get like an outline for this template. Okay. come up with a name for what to call it by the way that's also really it's, it's got to be some clever acronym i'll come up with it yeah so cool. maybe it should we'll, we'll do something like um what is it when when your pirates board your ship a vast Ahoy. <laughs> i don't know something like that <laughs> but we'll make it we'll make it like a something very nautical and kubernetes like well it needs to actually be generic for cncf not just right. kubernetes well, so we keep that in mind. I'm glad you told me that. Yeah, yeah, because this is this this SIG is for all of CNCF. So we have people who have nothing to do with nautical, nautical terms, actually. Good, um, good. I'm actually yeah. tired of nautical terms anyway. So that's okay. <laughs> it, well, the problem with nautical terms, <clears throat> they're uh, not very accessible, especially across languages and cultures. So there's nothing wrong with us just using our words and being explicit. I just want to make sure that yeah. when, when I talk about it, that I'm using some common language to describe what it is, that's all. Totally makes sense, thank you. Yeah, oh man, my voice is going in and out. I never talk to people and then I have a meeting and it's like, my voice is so weak, <laughs> darn COVID. Um, yeah, well, we've got a ton of great stuff here. I don't know if there's anything else you want to chat about. Um, no, I think like, from, oh, so, sorry, go ahead. Charles. I was just going to say, I think that's all the things that we had wanted to bring to the meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For me, it's just like, how do we even get started? So, I mean, now we have a just plan. <laughs> it's like, just start like, talking I, to people. Yeah. I have an idea. It's like, I don't know, like, what, what do you, do we even do? So it's like, it's good. We have like a first start questions and then we'll move from there. Um, so I can help facilitate uh, you know, I'll obviously I'll be at every single one of these meetings, but if you, if you feel like you need something from me and I'm not doing it or whatever, or you just have confusions, feel free to just reach out and, and, you know, ask me or Paris or anybody like, Hey, how are we supposed to move something forward? Whatever. Nope. Um, usually if something isn't moving forward, it's because someone doesn't realize it's on their plate. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 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 And everyone is busy. Yeah. Yeah, but I think like if if uh, until the next meeting, you can kind of maybe just think about potential people and if you meet them just, you know, like, ask if they would be interested, like that would be like a huge help. Um, uh, if yeah, because yeah, yeah, I'll keep that, that, that like it's contingent know. on like getting those brains uh, talk to them right like otherwise. Uh, but yeah, I yeah. think that that would be like the biggest um, uh, thing on our end. I have one potential name I need to, to think about it, make sure I'm not mixing up my people. Um, yeah. You know how it is, you know, handles, not people sometimes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, um, I think we have a couple people we can reach out to at the beginning. Yeah, I think probably always the beginning is a little harder, right? Because you're getting started and, but hopefully yeah. once we're rolling and things are um, moving forward, it's gonna be easier. I think it will. It's, this is this is stuff that's near and dear to everyone's hearts. So I'm sure people will be happy to to give us feedback. Yeah. Great. 
Okay. Oh, um, if there's nothing else, I think we're we're good. We can okay. have some yeah. time back. Yeah. Th thanks for your time. It was really helpful, Carolyn. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you for showing up and uh, eating this. <laughs> we <Yeah>. will. <laughs> we're going to be regular this year. So <laughs> right. yeah. that's what we need. Awesome. Right. Okay. Have well, a great day. Thank you. you too. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.